question isn't who or why anymore so much as how. How could 200,000 tons of steel drop to the ground in under 11 seconds because of a fire? Well, over a thousand architects and engineers say it simply can't, not the way it happened on September 11th. And now they want a new investigation. Well, Tim King is the editor of SalemNews.com. He's been covering this issue for quite some time now, and he joins me live from Oregon. You know, Tim, RT has been covering this topic extensively over the years, you know, and I found it very interesting that, that the first line of the piece you wrote said, quote, the mainstream press is showing interest in a taboo, however glaring subject, the inconsistencies in the Bush White House 9-11 account. First of all, what are the inconsistencies here, and why do you think that the mainstream media has started to pay attention now? Well, I think that part of it is that uh, there are certain facts with uh, things like the melting temperature of steel, and um, you know there are a lot of very, very known uh, uh, criteria about building implosions. And I think it's the fact that a thousand engineers have signed on to this report now, and they're just saying it's it's physically impossible. The, you know, the version. And a lot of us, I think when the passports were showing up on the sidewalks of Manhattan just hours after the initial crash, really didn't uh, have a lot of faith that we were going to get a real story. And I think that, you know, after all this time with this many professionals, and these are high caliber professionals making these points that we just have to pay attention. And now the mainstream media is too. You also say, um, you know, based on the interviews and research you had done, that a third building came down that day, wasn't hit by an airplane, uh, but you write that it did contain a lot of records uh, that certain members of the financial industry didn't miss. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Sure. Well, this is a uh, building that was a World Bank building, and um, from our understanding from the research that's been done, there were just billions of dollars worth of gold down below. There were also a lot of records in that building that uh, they conveniently disappeared. Uh, this is security and loan administration scandal, a lot of things along those lines. Uh, they were things that, they were records that uh, these groups were not sorry to see uh, vanish into thin air. And Building 7, just the notion that it came down at all, when, as you said, it wasn't struck by an aircraft, I think, honestly, and I hate to say this, but I think half the Americans you could ask, how many buildings came down in New York that day? They would say two, they would not say three. And Building 7 was a skyscraper. It was not as tall as the uh, two main buildings, but it was very substantial. And since jet fuel burns about the temperature of diesel, which isn't enough to melt steel in the first place, the notion of the third building coming down after not even being struck by an aircraft, it's, it's pretty far out. Well, you know, I, I think it's safe to say that perhaps one of the reasons that, that this is not really written about or really talked about much in the mainstream media is that there is this sort of stigma around questioning the events of 9-11, that, that it's unpatriotic to do so. How would you respond to that? I would say that's exactly the case, and that's what all of the researchers and reporters who have taken the time to go into the subject have dealt with. It's an instant uh, call on patriotism. It's an instant call on ethics. But in reality, it's just a, it's a case where some of us that have the factual data, we just can't, we just can't go on not, not bringing this forward. It's just too important of a subject. And, uh, yeah, I do believe that Americans have really had the wool pulled over their eyes firmly for all of this time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a very hard one when you are an American to uh, face this and try to put your mind around it. It's just, it's so painful to consider what could have happened. So does this piece in the Washington Times then signal that there could, in fact, be a formal inquiry, maybe a new investigation uh, sometime in the near future? I would like to think that. Um, I think uh, Mr. Farmer and some of the other uh, members of the 9-11 Commission who we've written about, uh, I'd like to hear their opinion on it. Uh, people that are now coming out and saying that the information that was put forth in that report was not all there, it was not correct, it was heavily influenced. Um, you know, the, the thing about this is that there are so many parts to it, and 9-11, you know, happened in three different locations, if you will, and each of the, you know, the Pentagon, Shakespeare, Pennsylvania, and New York, they all have their own major inconsistencies in the story. So it, it's, it's really, I think, much larger than any of us can ever really uh, fully grasp. But it's coming forward slowly. Tim King, SalemNews.com, I do want to thank you for your analysis. Thank you.